made it. How are you? <laughs> Sam Horick is one of those people involved in New Zealand's national industry. He lives on his 1,200-acre ranch in the central part of the country's North Island. The landscape defies description with ordinary adjectives like pretty and beautiful. It's flat out incredible. Well, I reckon being a sheep farmer in New Zealand's the best life that there is. Uh, you know, it's not a lot of money in it, but it's, uh, you get a living, three meals a day, you get time to play golf and do a bit of fishing. So the quality of life is really great. New Zealand's climate screams for sheep. There's enough grass here to make a Toro dealer's heart race with anticipation. Enough rain to keep grass growing non-stop winter and summer. And there are no predators. Most New Zealand animals are imported. No one's imported coyotes yet. The sheep mow the grass. Mowing the sheep is another matter. Seventy-one cents a head. 12 months a year, the shearers shear, holding their subject immobile with wrestling-type moves that resemble a dance at times. Now, if it is a dance, the music has to be upbeat. A fast shearer can whip through 500-plus sheep a day. The latest record is well over 800. Harry is faster than most. Here's how he did against a stopwatch. One minute, two seconds to remove six months' growth from a breeding ewe. Not bad. Also, not reason to celebrate. There's work to do. Most of a sheep's life is spent on New Zealand's hillsides. They eat, they make baby sheep, and they grow wool. But from time to time, they have to be brought in, herded, or in local jargon, mustered. There are highly specialized tools for the job. They are as follows. Man with whistle. Dog with bark. Man on American quarter horse. And man on Japanese quarter horse. For aesthetics, we'll stick to the first three. Cream-colored sheep against a green pasture are pretty. But when you start moving the sheep across that green, the effect is fantastic. Jim's job is moving the sheep over the green. Same job he's had since he was 15. He's well over 25 now. Had a pretty look around. Done a lot of driving, must a lot of big country. So by long we're doing that, we'll be happy. Exactly what Jim was saying was... Had a pretty look around. Done a lot of driving, must a lot of big country. So by long we're doing that, we'll be happy. Not a bad way to make a living. On your horse, mingling with nature, and letting the dogs do the work. You get a young one, you'll probably go straight through the middle of them for a while. But once he gets educated to it, he's, he's just pretty good. A good dog worth a lot of money? Yeah, good dog is. I'll buy I'll get about seven, eight hundred that black black and daniel. There are two types: an eye dog, which intimidates sheep with a stare, and a hunt away, which motivates with its bark. Lousy management techniques with people, but it seems to work with sheep. Get over. Speak, speak, speak. <laughs> The job here is to get these sheep into pens under this building so they can be shorn. Tools, one man with a whistle and a coarse yell, and two dogs. Get on here. Piss off. To get the job done, sheep dogs will do some amazing things. When they need to get behind sheep that need moving, they'll walk on top of other sheep to get there. And if there's a fence in the way, they'll just jump it. It ain't pretty, but it works. So much of what's exciting about New Zealand is in the country, far away from the big cities and the big hotels. A popular way to see New Zealand is to stay on farms. There are hundreds of homes, like Sam and Margaret Horrocks, where Americans can stay and get a feel for farm life. Kiwi beer! <laughs> Sam, does it ever strike you as unusual that Americans like to come out here and look at the, look at the farm so much? Uh, no, not at all. Most of them uh, come from the cities. They've never been on a farm in their lives. And um, 
they're really intrigued by uh, what goes on. All you have to do is look out your window once and see the wild turkeys wandering in a pasture. Or see and hear the magpie calling, and you'll see why people want to be sheep ranchers and why Americans want to stay on New Zealand sheep farms. So that's the story of sheep, New Zealand's second most numerous animal. The folks at Air New Zealand who provided air travel for our crew promised more trout in their country than sheep. We'll see tomorrow. Fishing, they tell me, is an art. Any artist will agree the proper setting inspires. This is the proper setting. The Hookah Lodge near Tapo, New Zealand. The price of a night's stay would make a sheik from an oil-rich nation gasp. But with only 17 rooms, each guest is treated like a sheik. Elegance is the rule. Trout is inevitably among the seven courses served at dinner. I caught this one. It was art. Trap it under this finger here. Lift it so you've got a small loop, then follow it down. You see, so you've got, a, you've got no slack. The first thing you want to do if you're going to go fishing in New Zealand is find a good guide. They know where the fish are. We found Laurie Collins, the best there is for my money. He put up with a dedicated non-fisherman and taught me to wear my waders with confidence. He also got a six-pound trout on his second cast. He said he's a good fish. Oh, that, that'll be six pounds, all of six pounds. But he's, he's right downstream, and there's not much I can do until he tires a wee bit. He's coming up the side now, underneath those bushes. Five pounders are the average in these parts, and that's just a two-year-old fish. Now, there's another fish just right there, and that's the one for you. If ever there was a place to learn fly fishing, a stream in New Zealand is the place. There are so many trout, they're forgiving of our inadequacies with a rod and reel. Get ready to strike. Get ready to strike. Drop your rod. See how it slows it down? And it's got to go at the same speed. Just a little bit slow. Sorry about the shout. Hey! <laughs> if you don't mind me showing you just once again that, that control of the line, because that's important. <laughs> oh, you're getting it perfect. Oh, you had another bite. Oh, you've caught, <laughs> you caught one of the boys. I got it on me right here. Hold on just a second. See where fishermen become addicted to this sort of thing. This is absolutely incredible. But I haven't got anything yet. Let's see if I can do something more than a bite. After another hour, the only thing I hadn't hooked was a fish. Believe me, though, it's my shortcomings. Other people were having great luck. Raymond did okay. Harry Elbin caught four. I take care of all the senior citizens in our district. I live in Rainbow Point, and so I sort of spread the joy around. I get pleasure out of it, and they get something, too. <laughs> if fishing is an art, fly fishing is like tackling the Sistine Chapel. I'm strictly a paint-by-numbers kind of guy, which means trolling may suit me better. Lake Tapo is perhaps the best lake in the world to fish trout that way. Rainbow trout were put in the lake about 100 years ago. Over the years, no new fish have been added. They didn't need to be. Russian River rainbow trout have done so well in New Zealand, they've been shipped all over the world to hatcheries, even back to California. Well, I always tell my clients that if we don't catch a fish, I'll swim home, you know, it's really and truly. Um, Chris Jolly is the man who's going to find me my fish. It's out there somewhere. Lake Tapo is about 250 square miles of water surrounded by green. It seems everything in New Zealand is surrounded by green. It rains a lot. Now, someone told me once, fish bite more when it rains. Who knows, maybe it's true. Oh, it's for 10 bucks. Wait, could it be? Yes, I think it is. I think it took me all of talking to fish. <laughs> In addition to trout, Lake Tapo is full of smelt and crayfish. 
lots of smelt in the crayfish, a steady, abundant source of food for the fish. The trout survive and prosper. Likewise, fishermen survive and prosper, even novices. If he starts to run, should I let him? Uh, with this rail here, he can pull against you like that. Boat captains brag on the lake that they catch one fish an hour. We caught two in a half an hour. One, 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 one. Yep, there we go. How about that? Hey. Hey. Like I said, art. Did you bring the champagne? <laughs>